Hello, beautiful people. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Zitto, and this is my brother Gary. We had a wonderful time at Get On 80 Fest number three in South Dakota. We crossed Wyoming today, which was very hot, and we have arrived here at Crazy Woman Canyon. We've been trying to get here for three years, and we've finally done it. We're here. This route also happens to be a featured road on Onyx Off Road. Nice. Yeah! <laughs> we found ourselves a nice little dispersed camp out here in the canyon, and we're gonna make dinner. Hold on. I think we're gonna back up a little bit. If you've been watching me for any amount of time, you probably know that I am a cold sleeper. Well, last year I found out, even as a cold sleeper, South Dakota in July is quite warm. For this trip, I prepared a little bit better and instead of bringing my zero degree bag, I took the Enlightened Equipment Revelation Down Quilt, which is available on motocampnerd.com. It was the perfect combo of small pack size and adjustable enough for the summer season that I could open it up and get lots of airflow or cinch it down and keep myself warm on the one or two nights on this whole trip that it did get below 50 at night. Quilts pack down smaller than traditional sleeping bags because they don't totally encircle you. They're designed to be used with a sleeping pad to provide the insulation underneath of you. The Revelation doesn't have a full-length zipper or a built-in hood, saving weight and space in your luggage. The first cave to be designated a national park, Wind Cave National Park features the world's largest concentration of rare boxwork formations, along with 33,970 acres of forest and prairie on the surface that act as a natural sanctuary for wildlife. In the emergence story, the Lakota ancestors refer to the cave as Onia Oshoka, where the earth breathes inside. This place is known today as Wind Cave, referred to in modern Lakota as Maka Okwoke, or Breathing Earth. We'll leave a link to an oral recitation of a version of the Lakota emergence story in the description for you to check out. And then this is how thin the boxwork is. Wind Cave is best known for its delicate calcite formations called boxwork. The vast majority of the world's discovered boxwork, 95%, is found in Wind Cave. One of the benefits of snagging a spot in the National Park's campground was the Free Ranger program in the campground amphitheater. The one we got to experience led us on a short hike, and the ranger told Lakota stories as the sun went down. And the sun and the moon were to take their place at the front, where they rightfully belonged. But there was another spirit.
I hate generators. All right, goodbye Wind Cave National Park. We have had a wonderful time. Brother and I are headed to Buffalo. Woo! <laughs> Crazy Woman Canyon is a spectacular narrow route through the Bighorn National Forest outside of Buffalo, Wyoming. Two legends give rise to the name of Crazy Woman Creek. Both are based on tragic events. In one, a young woman is left alone after an attack on her village. She lived in a squalid wikiup, and on moonlight nights could be seen leaping from rock to rock in the creek. The Crow Indians felt that she brought good luck and therefore left her alone. The second legend told of a trader who unwisely sold whiskey, or fire water, to gain favor with the Indians. When it was gone, the Indians demanded more, which he could not supply. After he was killed, his young wife made her escape, only to wander up and down the creek, demented. Because of the loss of her sanity, she was safe from further harm by the Indians. It is said that Jeremiah Johnson cared for her thereafter. Welcome to home for the night. We're having tacos. <laughs> TVP tacos to be exact. Textured vegetable protein. We have tortillas. We got cheese and lettuce. This is gonna be bougie AF. Brother is
Good morning, beautiful people from our little dispersed campsite along Crazy Woman Canyon. We got some miles to do today. Better start packing up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, brother, welcome to home for the night. We are just outside of Red Lodge because tomorrow we're gonna ride Beartooth Highway. I've done it before, have you done it? I've not. Brother's first time <laughs> on a Beartooth Highway. That's gonna be super cool. I did not plan it that way. I was just excited because we were close. <laughs> and I haven't ridden it since 2016 on a carbureted motorcycle, so I'm really excited to ride it on a fuel-injected bike. We stopped at the grocery store in Red Lodge and picked up some goodies because I think we're going to have crab cakes for dinner. Very bougie. Very bougie. <laughs> but first we have to set up tents. Kind of important before we make food. Or at least that's my personal rule. Because once you make food, you're tired and you don't want to do anything else. So, tents first, food second. <laughs> oh, the bugs. I love, having, I love having anxiety attacks about losing a Gerber hatchet at a campsite that is now 200 plus miles away. It's awesome. I don't know if I can make dinner, brother. Who can be trusted leaving the out valve open on a sleeping pad? I wonder why it's not filling up, Vanda. Maybe because you left the owl valve open while you're trying to inflate it. Who, who does that? Who does that? Maybe don't try to do stuff when you're in the middle of an anxiety attack. Maybe that's the answer here. Uh, you had your anxiety attack. Get over it. Let's fucking eat. <laughs> <laughs> you said if I put up my tent, I could have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're making crab cakes. Okay, first things first, we need to constitute the, the dehydrated eggs. For precise things, I actually have 
these tiny measuring spoons. They're tiny because I actually cut off the handle. The precious! It was a single crown. Oh my god, it actually fit in a cup. Oh, look, it's so pretty! Now that looks like a test pack. <laughs> <laughs> All the patties shall be tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little overzealous. This is what the inside of the duffel looks like before I add the rumple and the puffy. So there's my power bank. That's the quilt I've been testing out. My down booties, sleeping pad, ground sheet. This is the Thule bag with all of my electronic charging stuff in it. There's my tent. There's a rain jacket. In that corner is my puffy pants and my pillow. Underneath all this is another towel and the rain liners for my pants and stuff and wag bags and those kinds of things. Yep. And then I just kind of use the puffy and my rumple to fill up any little gaps in the bag. Doo -doo -doo. And then I squeeze the air out. Good morning, beautiful people. It is a lovely morning here at our campsite outside of Red Lodge. We made tea and brother had coffee and we had breakfast and all that business. Today we're going to ride Beartooth Highway, which is an all-American highway. It's very fancy. Dubbed the most beautiful highway in America by on-the-road correspondent Charles Kroll, the Beartooth Highway climbs to an astounding 10,947 feet above sea level. Since its completion in 1936, the highway has awed millions of visitors with its astounding views of one of the most rugged and wild areas in the lower 48 states.
as it winds its way from the northeastern entrance of Yellowstone National Park to Red Lodge. The highway traverses an impressive range of ecosystems, from lush lodgepole pine forest to alpine tundra. At the highway's summit, travelers find themselves in a sky-high world of glacial cirques, clear alpine skies, and snow that lingers through the summer months. The brutal climate at this elevation deters the growth of trees and shrubs, and the plants that do grow here have adapted in remarkable ways. Some convert sunlight to heat, and many conserve water the way desert plants do. In the 69 miles between Red Lodge and Cook City, there are no other businesses except for the Top of the World store sitting at 9,400 feet. Well, good morning, beautiful people from our hotel here in Butte. This is the third time that we stay at this Best Western, and I think it might become tradition. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good hotel. It's a good Best Western. <laughs> Today is the last day on our route back to the ranch before prep for Rocky Mountain Roll happens. For those who don't know, I host a motorcycle campout, a little grassroots motorcycle campout on our family's ranch every year in August. And so we're headed back so that I can prep for that, for all the lovely people who are on their way. I enjoy seeing everybody who comes out to Rocky Mountain Roll. They've become like family to me because there's a lot of people who come every single year. So I'm stoked about that. But we gotta pack up this chaos of a hotel room and hit the road. Yeah. <laughs> On our way back to the ranch, we took a small detour down Rock Creek and stumbled upon this little food truck in the most unexpected place. It was delicious and a fantastic way to end this trip. I've spent the last year and a half working on the Motorcycle Camp Cookbook, and on April 9th, it will officially be available for pre-order on Indiegogo. There's 70 single serving recipes that are easy to multiply as needed, ingredients lists designed to let you pop into a grocery store, get what you need, go to camp and make dinner. No at home prep required. Little to no need for a cooler and the recipes that do need one are labeled. 
All recipes are field tested on a single burner isobutane backpacking stove, and every recipe has a photo and icons to let you know if you need a skillet, pot, or both. A full introduction to all the things you need to know to get started, including all the different kinds of stoves, cooking vessels, water filters and storage, food and wood safety, cleaning up at camp, substitutions, and the list goes on. It's packed full of information helpful for anyone with limited storage, not just motorcycle campers. The initial pre-order campaign is for the ebook PDF and paperback copy of the book. The proceeds from the pre-order campaign will go towards Gary and I's trip to Alaska in 2025. The pre-order campaign will have the best discount on the books, so definitely hop on that while you can. I'll leave a link down in the description. Dinner on the Genesis stove. Yeah. Making crab cakes for dinner. Okay, now you can grab it. <laughs> crab cake wrap. Oh yeah. <laughs> Approved. Yeah. <laughs>